Hey folks, it's Scrunchy Sims. As you can tell from the thumbnail, there's a little bit of a story with this build, but first, background. So if you've been watching my River Blossom Hills Let's Play, you know that Jules O'Mackey uh, and some other Sims were trying to find careers in a, a certain field, and they just couldn't with all the careers with the expansion packs. It's kind of hard for those to come up in the newspaper or on the computer. So I thought, huh, we shall make an employment office. So that's what this building is. This building is downtown, as you can probably tell from the terrain. And this is the second downtown building that I've built uh, from scratch. You can see the other one was like a small bar. And the idea behind the other one, by the way, was that it would be small enough to easily load and not overwhelming to computers or anything like that. And I may have strayed a bit away from that concept with this one. <laughs> but um, I, I still think I still think it's not huge. It's not ginormous. It's not like a giant build. But for me, for my usual like, keep it small, keep it simple. It's a little, it's a little extra. Um, but basically, I wanted this to be a official building that is kind of bureaucratic inside. Like I live in New York. And that's also kind of what the other bar is based on. It's kind of a New York style of building. And I want to continue making downtown more like that, just because that's kind of the only city I know near and dear to me. Um, so basically, I wanted to make kind of a New York style building that's like this fancy edifice and it's somewhat old. It was like very fancy looking, but inside it's actually very bureaucratic and boring and just like every other kind of administrative building. <laughs> and uh, if you're familiar with New York, you might have seen some buildings like that. If you've only visited, you may not have been inside them, but like there are post offices that are like just a normal post office. And they look really uh, grand from the front and stuff like that. And they're kind of imposing to walk up to. But then inside, it's just the same. It's just the same stuff. So <laughs> that's that's the concept with this one. I really wanted to have that kind of vibe. And also the main objective, the whole reason I was making this is so that I could have my Sims come here and get a job that maybe isn't coming up on the computer. And there's a specific job board. You can get it on Mod The Sims. I'll link it down below. You'll see me grab it later, probably way later in the build than this. And basically this whole build was just to house that one object so there would be a place for that to be so that Sims could get whatever job in a career they wanted. Not that they could get like different levels of jobs, but just like in whatever career they could just go up to this board, which I think is... A little more realistic. I like that they have to go somewhere to like work for it a little harder instead of just going on the computer. Um, but I really wanted a place for them to go so I didn't have to wait like days and days of sim lives just for them to get a job and a career. And so in the build right now I'm using the mansion and garden like roof things which I've never really used before because I didn't have mansion and garden stuff for a while until like a few years ago. So I haven't played around with it a lot, but it was just perfect for this build. I was looking up some like, what sort of shorter, older buildings look like in New York? Like what do their roofs look like? Cause honestly, most roofs are flat, but I knew this one needed to be a little bit extra. And you normally don't really spend that much time looking at the roof of a building unless you're like on it. And usually that's like a weird apartment building roof. Um, I also talk about that in my other, in my bar speed build. Um, but I, I wasn't always looking necessarily at the roof. It's not really something you see a ton. If you're looking at from ground level, you usually see all the ground level things. You don't really get a far off view from a lot of buildings. So I was looking for inspiration and I saw a lot of roofs that reminded me of these roof pieces and it was just perfect, like stars aligned, very happy with it. So what this building actually is, is kind of an interesting question. It's called an employment office technically, but I kind of think it's like a mixed use municipal building. It's a little bit, once we get inside, you'll definitely see once I start decorating. It's like partially that kind of bureaucratic, like, oh, you need to go here, you need to go there to stand you know, behind a counter and talk to someone while they input whatever into a computer or give you some form or something. 
But then there's also kind of like a grander lobby. I put a cafe in one of the higher floors because it kind of started reminding me of like more sightseeing attractions in New York. Like the Met has a little cafe in it and like weird spots. And I like wanted some sort of food or drink object there for Sims when they're here. And there's like a little library section. So maybe it's also a library building. I don't know. In The Sims, I feel like you have a lot more multi-use spaces than in real life, maybe. But I felt like they all kind of go together somewhat, but it's probably a little more <laughs> a little more multi-use than in real life. And behind here, I was trying to figure out what to do with this little space back here, and I decided to make a little park. And I think this is pretty cool and realistic just to have a little, like, weird garden in the back, a public small park. And I think it'll be a really nice addition to this to have like other things to do besides just be in the building. Maybe like the Sims kids come with them when they go to the lot and the kids can like be in the park. I think it adds a lot of character and it kind of makes it feel more like a street. Like I added this faux street on the side because I really want these builds to feel kind of cramped in a way that's hard to achieve in The Sims in general, but especially in Sims 2. Because I, I want this to feel like a little chunk of the city and like everything is pushed really close to each other and that's kind of hard to get. I also kind of nestled it between these large like deco, neighborhood deco buildings, which I think is kind of helpful and you'll see in some of the screenshots especially. I love how they look with the deco buildings because it does feel like this older building kind of nestled in between a bunch of newer high rises, which I, I really like that feeling. As for the style of the building itself, I was thinking it's somewhat older and it does look fairly like Greek Revival, I would say. But what I was really inspired by with that door, also I believe a mansion and garden store, is this kind of art deco thing. So. In the Art Deco period, a lot of buildings were built or renovated in that style, especially because of the Great Depression. And in New York, a lot of places have kind of Art Deco vibes, Art Deco edifices. So I wanted this to be, even if the building itself was maybe older, something that was redone or added to, or maybe like the door was especially made or the tiles or something in the Art Deco period, because I feel like that gives such a New York vibe to a building when there's just these Art Deco flourishes, like that big door there. I also love these little lights, the little sconces. They just seem so quintessentially perfect for this build. Stairs, stairs. So I used a three tile wide door. Um, there are no three tile wide stairs, if you did not know. And so I was like, hmm, I can't do those big fancy stairs. Maybe that's wrong. So I started playing around with where to put single staircases. Should I just do three wide of that? But I feel like that can get kind of boring. And eventually I wound up with this sort of split staircase thing, which I think actually worked perfectly. And I think that reminds me a lot more of different buildings because you kind of have to be careful, I think, in these larger buildings of where you're routing people. And you like to have separate staircases or really big staircases so that tons of people in these public buildings can move around them. So I think that was very true to the architecture on this one. And these railings match perfectly. It all just seemed to work out. I'm really enjoying doing all these community lots. I feel like I really never built community lots until like this year when I started trying to figure out more things that I wanted in my game and what I could make videos of. And I've just really been enjoying it. So I think I'm gonna make some more downtown lots. I think maybe I'll do some like Blue Water Village stuff. I don't know if there's any particular kind of community lot, especially you would like to see me build, I would be so open to suggestions because I'm, I really just like doing my own take on those. Like I think I like to renovate the Max's houses or use like a lot bin house. I usually don't like to build my own houses. Like Sims are usually fine in the houses because I play pre-mates that they come in and that'll just renovate it as they need it. But I really like building my own from scratch community lot. It, it makes me really happy and I feel like, um, I don't know, it allows my creativity to run wild in a way that maybe 
Uh, it doesn't quite in houses. I, I really like to imagine these spaces. So here I'm putting in that little barista station and this little counter. I'm kind of picturing this counter. I don't know why I keep using the Met as a reference. It's really like not a, a reference for this type of building necessarily. It, I guess architecturally it a little bit is. Um, but like, you know, you go up and you talk to the central like ticket situation or information station. I just think that is is a perfect little nook for that. I could also imagine maybe this didn't used to be a city building. Maybe this was like a bank or something originally, and that's originally the teller counter. So I could see all sorts of different things. Maybe it was, a, I don't know, a hotel, not really a hotel type of building, but I, I could see that counter being kind of a historic thing that's been preserved, and now it's really just like a informational thing. And I did block off behind that counter with walls, because yes, in real life, there would be Sims behind there, like at, at the front desk or whatever, but I don't really want my Sims going back there and like getting stuck. And it's okay, like I can imagine Sims being back there and what that would look like back there. I don't need my Sims to go back there. So I would prefer just to block it off. I don't know if Sims will get very frustrated and be like, but I want to sit in that chair. I want to look at that sconce on the wall and they'd be upset they can't go there. But if they do, hopefully they'll have enough other things on the lot to occupy themselves. Yeah, and those are the chairs. And I kind of, I like placing them in a way that's kind of natural, like someone just got up out of it or it's waiting for someone else to sit down in their spot. Um, and in my builds, I really try to use a lot of Maxis Match sort of styles. And part of that for me is not really using like off tile placements for objects. And a little bit of that is, I, I don't know if this is real or just like made up in my mind, but I feel like my, my game gets slower when I try to use those like off tile cheats. And I don't know exactly why, maybe it's just overwhelming, but I like to keep it kind of in the Maxis style of like keeping things on tile. Like what can I do with that restriction of literally everything needs to be in its own square. And I kind of think it's a fun challenge. I kind of think it makes my builds blend in with the sims because I'm not like redoing the whole world I'm not making my own world myself so I really like when I can make something that blends in really well with the surrounding environment and part of that I think is doing a little bit of that and I don't personally mind it I think it's a fun puzzle <laughs> but I know tons of people prefer things to be you know placed diagonally diagonally would be nice or like in between two tiles or something, but yeah, not not my vibe, at least for now. So here I'm trying to center this chandelier guy, light light from the ceiling, I guess it's a chandelier. <laughs> and I wound up just going with two because again, my, my three tile door seemed so good at the beginning. And then um, reality hit that other things are not three tiles in The Sims, but I, th I think I made it work. It still is a very symmetrical building. Very symmetrical. So you can see here that the two rooms on the sides are kind of the administrative, more like in my head when I'm thinking of like bureaucratic kind of uh, nightmare rooms. <laughs> so they have this like tile flooring that maybe it's linoleum, maybe it's not. Um, officially in the game it's tile, but it, it doesn't really matter. And so, some like um, fluorescent lights. It's just not as grand as the rest. And that's where people actually like work and go to do things. And it's not like the showier rooms like the rest of the place. And I really like doing this two story lobby with this balcony here. I feel like it's such a like nice public building feature. And I hadn't really done anything, I think, with that style before. But I, I feel like it was really successful. And in some of the screenshots, I got this one, like two great screenshots where it's like you can see both floors. I was just really happy with how it came out. Um, and I spent a long time trying to figure out this barista stand situation. <laughs> and the counters don't want to like become an L with it. But I didn't want to cut it off completely because I still wanted it to be like usable. So I play around with those in a while and like, you know, what turns into an L and what doesn't, it's a little bit confusing and like, does it work with move objects? Because I don't know about anyone else, but whenever I have move objects on, 
the countertops never really want to do their auto stuff. Like they just sit where they are and they don't want to auto L or like go against uh, an appliance or anything like that. So I always have to turn move objects off for that kind of stuff. So at this point, I was really trying to figure out what I was going to use all of this space for. Because the thing is, I had a vision of how the outside of the building looked. And I knew somewhere there would be that job posting board that would serve the purpose for the whole build. <laughs> but I, I hadn't really figured out exactly what each and every spot would be. Because if you just have one room, the, the actual employment office... You know, you need to figure out more things to justify the size of the building. So I went with that cafe, I do a little library section, and then one office kind of just becomes a decoration office, but I'm really excited with how that turned out. And I, I, I'm really proud of it, honestly, the clutter I did in that one. And I realized that with all the space inside, I had neglected to put a bathroom. <laughs> so I decided to put these public restrooms out there in the park, just a toilet in a little stall. Um, I didn't do a sink, which maybe it's gross, but like it's Sims, they don't wash their hands anyway. It's <laughs> germs don't exist in the Sims. Um, so I just did this. I thought it would also add a little bit more of the public park vibe rather than like, oh, this is just a garden off of this building, which is maybe kind of a small detail, but I liked the feeling that this was like its own public place, not just like a detached parts of this building. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, this little hut. <laughs> um, and I put a little like, what is that, breakdancing cardboard object? Because I don't think I had put that anywhere before. Uh, I, I think it came with free time, I want to say, maybe apartment life. I'm not sure what that came with. But I thought it would be a good addition for this small park. Um, and then just trying to do like this winding path. I definitely wanted this to be one of those parks that's kind of landscaped to look a little meandering and a little natural, even though it's kind of a small park, not one that's like very geometric, which is kind of an interesting contrast to the architecture of the building to me. So I was kind of inspired by like small sections of Washington Square Park for this. And later, like, I put a chess table in there, and it's just about, like, benches, chairs, tables, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, park things, you know. Um, and also someone performing. So I was just thinking about small sections of Washington Square Park, which I'm familiar with, <laughs> which I live near and went to school near for a while. And that was kind of the inspiration for what's going on with this path and the flower beds and stuff like that. And I realized I kind of wanted a waiting area in the actual building because, you know, if you're going up to this counter and, like, you're the fifth in line and you just need to get this form submitted or, like, do something or pay the whatever, it's like you want somewhere to sit. So I play around with a few different things to be out there and I figure out what I kind of like best, uh, but I thought that was a good thing to put in those kind of empty hallways. And I've really been enjoying landscaping with these uh, Sims 4 conversions to Sims 2. I feel like the plants in Sims 4 work really, really well when converted to Sims 2 because the style of the plants is really similar, actually, the game, the actual art style for those. Even though in Sims 2, it's like, the plants that we have really stay within the boundary of their box, so they never overlap. And there's not that many plant options, honestly. So I really like having the Sims 4 plant conversions in my games. And honestly, they're probably my favorite Sims 4 conversions that I have. If I had to recommend any to anyone, I would recommend plants. They blend in so well. And I love how these lights look at night. I feel like this moment when I turned it to night was the moment where I was like, ah, yes. This build is turning out exactly how I want. I just love how the lighting, and I also don't have a lighting mod. Like, that's just normal Sims 2 in-game lighting with those, like, floor spotlight floodlight things. I just think the game can look so good sometimes, especially being, eight, like, 15, now 16, recently the Sims 2 16th birthday, 16-year-old 16 game. It can really look so amazing sometimes. So I'm doing a little library nook up here and trying to figure out like what configuration of the tables do I want? 
what tables like serve what purpose or desks really some of them are tables some of them are desks and what chair is good and I ultimately really like this it has kind of a nice public library feel and I put a few computers there because if a sim doesn't have a computer maybe they can come here they can do whatever they need to do and they can also do some reading and also it's a good space filler let's be real <laughs> And trying to figure out what to put on these walls was kind of difficult because they're really a lot of walls and they're very imposing and it's like you don't want to decorate it too much like this isn't someone's house. There aren't going to be a bunch of like fun paintings everywhere. But I do think there needs to be some decoration otherwise it would look very blank. It's just kind of what is the decor that will accentuate the architecture instead of kind of like cover it up and work against it. But this wall right here at the top of the stairs that you've already seen me mess with was definitely the hardest because there wasn't one thing. I think in a perfect world it would be like an art deco mural up there of like the city and workers or like New York State. I don't know. I think it would be something like that probably like made in the 30s on some like New Deal program. Um, if you're not American listening to this, I'm interested. I don't know if people, like, in other countries know necessarily about, I don't know, the history of the Great Depression and those things. But basically, in the Great Depression, the government sponsored a bunch of works uh, and artists to do things. And it was in the Art Deco style, because that was what was popular at the time. And so a lot of public buildings now have, like, murals or edifices or statues and things like that that were part of that push to pay artists and like reinvigorate the economy and make sure people had jobs and all of those kind of things and I think it's really great it's a good you know legacy of the government caring and sponsoring arts um, which which I really enjoy and you know Art Deco is also a pretty cool art movement I enjoy the style a lot <laughs> And I wanted to put these fans, I loved when I found these fans just by happenstance, because nothing says, like, terribly ventilated office environment like those overhead fans. Just nothing, nothing like it. <laughs> but I wound up using these Greek letters just because, in my mind, I don't actually know what the simlish of those translates to. Uh, maybe someone else does who actually would bother to look up a, a, a simlish alphabet, but not me. That could never be me. Um, but I kind of, in my head, is, I'm picturing that's, like, New York City, New York State, whatever the, like, Simlish equivalent, or, like, I guess it would be, like, Sim City, City? I guess Sim City is just two initials, but you know what I mean. It's, like, whatever the seal or the logo or some something, something having to do with the place. Um, so in my mind, like, in the universe of my, I guess, River Blossom Hills Let's Play or my that's my only let's play because <laughs> there's a lot of other neighborhoods and like subhoods attached to it at this point um but in the world of that it's not like new york it's like sim city but in my mind sim city is like new york so that's why i'm basing all of the buildings on new york and i love these sims 3 university conversion shelves they are some of my favorite things and they look so good in this office environment like, I pictured these offices to not even be fully digitized at this point, and there's just, like, all this stacks of stuff, and it's like, oh, where did we put that document? And you gotta talk to the person who's worked for there for 17 years, and, you know, sometimes things get lost, everything's dusty. That is how I view these offices, and I'm so happy with this office on the left, how it turned out. I just really feel like my clutter game was A+. Plus. I really feel like I conveyed the vibe. <laughs> and not that I didn't in other places necessarily, but like, I feel incredibly proud of this office. In, in my like, quote unquote, real life, I do some production design um, slash art direction for like short films and stuff. And what that basically means is kind of decorating a space to look how it should look for the world of the film or TV show or whatever you're working on. And that's basically what I got to do with these offices is just make it look like very lived in, like the actual vibe. And so I think that's why I like doing these kind of like, ooh, how would this office look? Or 
it's in this old building, but there's this aspect to it because it's kind of a fun challenge to see, like, can I mix those aesthetics? Can I make it look lived in? And all of that. And it kind of reminds me of that kind of film work that I'm used to doing but haven't done in a while because of uh, current circumstances. So here's probably the part where I should talk about what you've maybe been waiting for this entire time. How did this build almost break my game? Or how did it break my game? I did recover it. Don't worry. Don't be in too much suspense. But um, basically after this clip that you're watching, I did this in kind of multiple sittings. I tried to get back into the build and every time I tried to load it, it wouldn't even load. It would crash during the loading screen. And I didn't know what was wrong. I could load other lots. Other things were working, but uh, <laughs> this one wasn't. And I like posted on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, Scrunchy Sims, same username as this one. And on one of my Sims 2 Facebook groups. And basically I had to figure out what CC item was causing it, which wound up being the thing. So you see here, I'm going in and replacing those tables that turn to non-CC items and putting items back that worked better than the ones that the game replaced it with. Um, and it was those chairs that were there originally. You might notice those are different chairs. I narrowed it down and went everything, but that chair and table set was in the game. It ran fine, so I'm pretty sure it was that chair and table set, sad to say. Um, but it's fine. Not a big loss. And I honestly realized that I didn't really use that much CC. I will say I, I keep my CC kind of organized, not completely by how recent it is. Oh, and there's that job board linked down below. I will link it. Um, I love how these looks. I also got some recolors for it that I think make it look a little more natural. Uh, but I do keep my CC organized a little bit by how recent it is. So if I have a problem like this, I can be like, oh, my 20 last CC items I put into the downloads folder. That's one of the issues. So it made the process a lot easier because I did that and I sorted by like how recent I'd put stuff in there. And it really wasn't actually that much of a painful process. Okay, speaking of New York, I think you'll probably be able to hear some truck backing up somewhere uh, in the distance. You know, I'm not gonna redo it, just gonna just gonna go on, that's, that's life. You're getting a little flavor of the build with that little background noise. Just, just think of it as extra flavor. I'm immersing you in the environment. So I changed those to this, those benches to these chairs. I just think they looked a little more utilitarian and a little more city-ish and less folksy. Like I think those benches are very like Pawnee City Hall from Parks and Rec. And these are a little more like city, like, oh my God, who has sat on this? I'm so upset. Why is it so slimy uh, kind of feeling? <laughs> and I didn't know exactly. I feel like maybe nothing would actually be on the like table or anything. But in the interest of having some good clutter and some good visual interest going on there, I thought maybe we should put something there. So I just put like a stack of newspapers and little, I don't know, I think that's like, it says document and pen is the name of that item. <laughs> but anyway, as this build wraps up, I just want to say I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm really happy I could eventually get back into the build. It took longer than I wanted to. <laughs> so thank you for waiting for this video. But I'm so, so excited for you to see the photos. Like, I just think some of the photos for this look so, so cool. And they really like remind me of the city and just like walking, walking through.